Hello everyone and welcome to the second installment of the Astroneer circuitry design playlist. This time I'm going to be talking about the logic and creation behind the paddle that you see here at the bottom of my display board. Now in Pong, the paddles went up and down, but in this breakout game, they only go to the left and the right. So we have the drone little drone guy kind of hovering right up above here, so we'll use him a little bit later. But we can press the C and the V key when in the rover to trigger each of these buttons. And these buttons, they move the paddle to the left, and they move the paddle to the right. Now, if you take a look at it, there's two different strategies that we can employ. We can turn off this floodlight, or work light, and then turn on this one to move the paddle to the right, because all four of these actually stay on the entire time. Or what we can do is we can turn off all five of these and then turn on all five of these ones. Both strategies work. As you, as you can imagine, turning off one and then turning on a different one is more efficient. However, because we have the power switches that have power gained and power loss mode, it's actually easier to do turning off all five and then returning on the next set of five, just because it turns out to be easier circuitry-wise. Now, one thing that I do want to mention while I am sitting here in this rover is we have a paddle that is five units wide and we have 11 floodlights on this board, which means that we can have a total of seven different paddle positions. So we have one, two, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If you ignore that little hiccup over there where I accidentally pressed the V key once again. So that gives us seven distinct positions that we're gonna to need to turn the work lights on and off again, assuming we go with the method of turning off and then back on every single piece of the paddle, which, believe it or not, is actually what we decide to do. So this is handling the paddle function. It may look a little bit complicated, but hopefully as I go through it, it isn't super, super tricky. But primarily, what I wanna discuss first is these seven buttons. As I mentioned, that those the paddle can be in seven distinct positions. Well, each of those positions is just tied to one of these buttons. So these generators here represent the paddles because this is how I end up doing the board display method. Uh, and the work lights being on represents where the paddle is. So you can see all five of them right there. So this button right here actually corresponds to the current position of the paddle because you can see that the cable pins all go to the generators with an on work light. It also does something over here, but that's a, a different thing that we don't need to worry about at the moment. So just hypothetical, hypothetically, if I flip that button, we see that the entire paddle disappears. And that's because, again, we're ju we just turned off all five of the different paddle positions. So this breaks out the ability to just trigger one of these buttons for turning on or off the paddle position. And that is what happens by this first row of power sensors right here. I mentioned previously we can use power sensors and power gained or lost, so that when we gain power, we can turn on the, the position of the paddle, and then when we lose power, we will turn off the position of the paddle, and then turn it on in a different location. And that's exactly what happens here. So because we have seven positions, we need seven work lights. So all of these splitters just split power seven different ways. Um, I could use an RTG here. I really don't need a generator because we no longer worry about an amount of power. We only worry about having power in general. So I have a generator. You don't need one. You can use an RTG. But essentially, you need power coming through seven different ways. Now there's a switch that basically acts as our enable. So this switch is on and allowing power to flow through. That's because we're in this position. This switch, on the other hand, is off because we do not want the paddle to be displayed here. And that's exactly what these guys do. These guys only connect to the button that you guys see right there. So there's another one connecting to the button, that one connects to the button, that one connects to the button. So these power switches focus on the paddle position. And it's fairly simple from there. If we were to turn this switch off, you would see that we triggered the button and turned off the paddle. And then if we were to turn this switch back on, we triggered the paddle once again because we are now letting power flow through this. So to demonstrate the technique that I was talking about, we can turn off power there, turn on power here. So this is moving the paddle one position up. And if you look, the paddle actually appears one position up from where it was supposed to be. So we know that our behavior is operating appropriately with this. Now, where it can get a little bit tricky is over here, this spider web mess. So from each of these seven positions, we now need to split it one more time because we need to handle the condition that we are moving the paddle upwards as well as downwards. So 
we're we're in this position right here. The reason we need to do this is because we need to make sure that we can go up and down from each individual position, not just up and down generically. So that's why we end up going here. The reason we also have to break it out is because these power sensors are in power gained only mode. So we cannot do both functionalities from the same power sensor because this one's in power gained and lost. This one's only in power gained. So what exactly do these guys do? Well, when power comes through here, this switch opens We'll, we'll get to the opening of that switch, and it triggers this power sensor. And what this does is because this is the up direction, it's going to turn off the current position of the paddle, and it's going to turn on one up, which is over here. And that's exactly what every single one of these guys does. It turns off the current one, and it turns on the next one. This one is going to turn off the current one up here, and then turn on the next one. Very simple. Same thing happens in the downward position. We turn off the current one, but then we turn on one down. So what exactly opens all these switches? The buttons on the side go and trigger, in this case, the downward position, because this is our pressing the down button. And this one opens all of the upper ones. Now again, this opens every single switch because we don't know what position we're in. So because we don't know if we're in all the way at the bottom or all the way at the top, we need to open every single one of the switches and only one of them that has power actually causes it to transition to the next state. Now, because we trigger every single switch, the reason we have so many spider webs here is because we now need to close every single switch after we trigger one of the power sensors. So that's why not only do we go to our current one and our net upper one for moving in the up direction, we also go to every single one of the switches that was triggered by the up button being pressed. And that's the logic behind it. So just to simulate the up button being pressed, we can go and press the up button over here and we can watch as all of the switches open all of the switches open this got triggered because we had power coming through it it closes off the current position opens up the next position and then recloses all of the switches that we just opened by pressing the up button the reason we have to do that is because again if we didn't reclose the switches this would then trigger which would then cause this to trigger and it would basically go all the way up or all the way down depending on the button pressed and we can see once again that because we moved up our paddle has shifted one unit up. And we can do the same for going down. If we were to press this button right here, we can see that it moves one down because the power came through this channel, triggered this power sensor, which reclosed all of the downward switches, turned off the current position of the paddle, and then turned on the next one. So once again, this is done because these are on power gained or lost. So when this loses power, it will remove the paddle position. And when this gains power, it will replace the paddle position. And that basically gains the functionality of the paddle that you guys see in Breakout itself. Um, it's a pretty cool piece of technology. Um, and when we trigger certain things and whatnot, um, we can cause other events to happen, which I will be covering in subsequent videos. Um, but for now, that kind of covers how the paddle functions. So if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to drop them in the comments, hit me up on Twitter and Discord, really anywhere that you guys would find appropriate. Um, as always, at the end of these videos, I do specify that I primarily stream on Twitch. So feel free to subscribe here. By all means, go follow on Twitch, follow on Twitter, all the above. I am trying to put more of these videos out. So again, if you have any questions, by all means, please ask them. If you like it, like the video, but we'll see you in the next one for sure. Have a great rest of your night, everyone, and we'll see you sometime soon.